I once was lost, but then I became found when my mother said to me, Benjamin, you need a system. And I'm going to talk with you about that today and how mothers have systems. And you need to look at them and learn from them because in the wake of Mother's Day, I was really thinking about this and it got me considering the one thing that I'd never really completely appreciated my mother for. That was her installation of systems in the way I go about things and in the way I run my life and in the way I really think about a lot, whether that's computing, whether that's gaming, everything else. I got a lot of the systems thinking that I do from my mother. So I'm going to get into that one today and I'm going to make some stuff happen with this next episode of Mr. Ben's ADD Experience Live. Poppy Chulo Dreaded, how you doing, my man? Good to see you. I am doing well. Just thinking about Mother's Day, I don't speak about my mother terribly often, but I do love and respect her memory, her legacy, and I take a lot of the things that she taught me to heart. So today I just wanted to give a little reflection and a shout out to all the mothers out there. I didn't, obviously I don't record during the weekend, so I didn't have a Mother's Day episode lined up, but today I thought, you know what, this is a good chance to get a little of that, catch on a little bit, bit of that motherly love and give a little respect out there to all the mothers who, who do one thing that a lot of people don't give them respect for, and that's building systems. We don't tend to think of the matriarchal force in families or the motherly love as being very systematized. We, we think usually in terms of computers and engineering and logic and math and that type of thing when we think of systems. But mothers are great examples, and I'll tell you a little bit about that in a few minutes. First of all, I just want to thank everybody who's been checking me out. All the episodes have been updated pretty much to YouTube, so I'm pretty much caught up to date with that. Speaking of systems, I'm just now getting in a role, getting in the flow, so you'll be able to check those out online pretty much after, right after I do the lives. I may delay a day or two or three, depending on what's going on, but I pretty much got the system down now. So you can always go check them out on YouTube after the fact. I will start archiving more and more of these off of Instagram and onto the podcast channels, meaning YouTube and Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, and all your podcast streams. If you're not up on the podcast game, you need to get up on the podcast game. What's going on? Uh, Samura Hippie. How do you pronounce that? I was about to say samurai, samurai, hippie, but I don't want to, I don't want to assume I know how to pronounce that. Ha glad to have you. So yeah, Mother's Day. So I guess I'll just start this one with a quick story because I can't stay too long on this one. But basically what happened when I was younger, I was getting into, I was getting into art. I was getting into sports. I was getting into computers. I was getting into reading. I had a comic book collection. I was out of control and I was reading all kinds of books. I was into a lot of stuff and I was just trying to do so much. And I was, I was quiet, but I was energetic and always doing things. And my mom, she loved this. She was like, look at him go. He's reading something. He's doing this. He's doing that. Just let him go. She would throw me in the library and I'd come back with all these books and she'd throw me in front of a computer and I'd start printing out stuff. She, she just, she was fascinated by my little energetic self. But at one point, she seemed kind of not frustrated. She seemed a bit concerned about how I was going about doing my things. And I, I wasn't sure of the exact situation. I was young at the time, kind of a, not a lost child, but I was just a child into my own thing, doing my own thing and just running around in circles basically as a kid. And my mother stopped me and said, you know what? I, I was trying, what was I trying to get done? I was trying to, figure out how to make some things happen, but I couldn't make them happen. And my mother stopped me. My mom stopped me. And she said, you know what, Benjamin, you need a system. And that made me stop. And I was like, a system? What are you talking about? I've got a plan. I just get in there. I do this. I do that. The result comes out the end. What do you mean a system? And she was just like, you need a system. And she didn't want, she didn't explain any further than that. This is one of the great mental tricks or one of the great mental powers my mother had was being able to say certain things that would just get in my head and make me, me do the work of figuring it out because that's what I needed to do. So I'd be getting ready for school. And I'd be a little bit late and I'm, I don't have all my things together. 
My mother would just calmly say again, you should put a system on that. And she kept coming back to it in different ways, guy kindly nudging me and reminding me that I don't have all these systems in place. And then at some point I started to kind of think, and I don't know if it was like, well, let me look at you and see what you're doing. But I, over time, I started watching my mother more and she would do things like before she went to bed, she would lay certain things out like, okay, I'm, I have my shoes here. I have my dress there. She'd put out, she'd open the refrigerator to make sure certain food was ready. And she, it was just this very quick little routine. She would go around and kind of set things up in the house before she went to bed. And when I noticed this, I was kind of like, oh, oh, okay. Okay. That, that, that looks like a system. Let me, let me start watching what my mom is doing. Sure enough, I started watching her when she got up, she would get up get a little coffee, go to the refrigerator, get her things, do this, kind of get her mind straight. Boom, boom, boom. Check the paper. Make sure we were all good in decent shape. Get her clothes ready and get on. And she just had a way of doing it. And it seemed so effortless and stressful. Me, on the other hand, I'm like, oh, I can't, I got to figure out which toys I'm going to bring for show and tell. I got to get my, all my papers together. My, mind you, I was an A student, so that wasn't the problem there. But I was just kind of a, a little scatterbrained as a kid, a little that. Ah. So I'm watching my mother and I'm like, that is a way to go. That is the way to be. Get a little organized, get a little together with my business, start putting things into systems. So now as, as a kid, I'm starting to ask myself, okay, what is a system? What do you mean a system? How do you systematize things? I started asking this question. So here's the current definition I have that you can follow along with. And I just got this from asking, asking my phone what, what a system was. And I kind of cobbled together a definition. Here, here's one. A set of things working together as a part of a mechanism or an ordered body to a given goal. Yeah. So if you've got an objective you're trying to achieve and you've got a series of steps or a series of resources, abilities, all these things coming together, working together to give you a certain result, that is a system. Of course, I didn't look this up as a kid. I just started recognizing it, but I wanted to throw the definition out there so we can talk as we go along. So as I'm as I'm growing up, I'm starting to watch my mother more and more in how she gets things done. Because at some point, I realized all the system talk she was doing was connecting with, with me on how I saw her doing things. I saw her really getting into sports. She would never, she liked the individuals on the team as, as characters. Like, oh, look at, look at that guy. Look at Jordan play. Look at him run. Look at this guy do this. I like the way he throws the ball. This guy's a great catcher, but she was very concerned with the coaches and the team system. And she would always get very upset when the team started to fall apart. Like they're not playing as a team. They're not working together. This whole thing isn't clicking. Something's wrong with those guys. Their system's not in place. And my mom didn't understand sports, but she's watching the system play out or not play out in certain cases. So between that getting the kids ready, getting everything together. I started noticing my mom had systems all over the place, just all over the place. And as, as intense as she was, she wasn't too stressed out if she had her system to go with. But if someone started messing with the system, like, hey, gas got down this low, you know, good and well, as part of the system, you're supposed to go fill it back up and give me the car back. You, at part of the system, you just keep the system flowing by doing these simple steps. And over time, I started taking that in. And now people who know me were like, well, how are you doing all this? How are you getting this done? How are you, how are you able to just continue with what you're doing and not get upset? I'm like, hey, can't get upset, man. Just work the system. Just run the play. Just keep the plan going. You set it up see how it works. If it doesn't work, adjust it, change it, keep moving forward. Don't get too upset when things aren't going wrong. Just run the system. And I was, 
and, and now looking back, this is kind of blowing my mind because so much of the good that has happened in my life was because of system. Now, when I say, when I say, think about mothers and how they get things done and think in thinking of systems, let me, let me step back with this. Cause I mentioned goals in there too. A little while ago, Scott Adams put out this idea about systems over goals. And regardless of what you think about Scott Adams, dude got a lot of issues, but he did kind of popularize the idea of systems over goals. A goal is something you want. You just say, hey, I want a million dollars. I need to be able to do this. I need, I'm going to have five kids and a, a great house on the beach or whatever. And you have these random goals and they have no, no steps, no processes, no ways of implementation to get where you're going. They're just thoughts. Well, putting together a system without a goal, if you run this system, it should give you a certain goal. And that was a weird way of thinking about goal setting and planning. It's like, you don't think about the actual goal. Think about the things you have to do in order to get you a goal. So you don't think about how do I lose five pounds? How do I get a six pack? How do I, you're thinking about all these goals, but if you spend all of your time just thinking about a system, like how do I, how do I get myself motivated in the morning to work out? How do I push myself to, to, to run more that may involve getting a new pair of shoes that may involve getting into a group, a group class for, for working out. There are all these different ways, but the whole point is when you start coming up with plans and processes and ways of implementing, you start developing a system. On Tuesdays, I do this. On Wednesdays, I do that. Let me try this. See how that works. Plan it out. You try it, test it, you fix the kinks, but you're not worried about the goal so much. You're only worried about the steps and the processes that you're using. And if worked out properly, they should get you where you want to go. And that's a largely different way of thinking than a lot of people who are, who keep professing that they're goal oriented and results oriented, they'll tell you. But I've tended to find out in a lot, an extreme amount of cases, you end up with problems because people are trying to attain something and it has little or no connection to what they're actually doing on a daily basis. And what you do on a daily basis, your system, is what ends up becoming your reality because you're not going to get a result without continually doing something in the present. We've been sold on this idea of the microwave lifestyle where you just pop something in and a result comes out, but it actually takes a long time to get to that point. It takes a long time to build up to it and get there. So putting a system in place is going to be a lot more effective in a lot of cases. Now, not to say that you shouldn't have goals, but the goal shouldn't be your thought. The system should be your thought. For example, my system for, for doing, doing these every night, it's not that I think, uh, I need to have five podcasts. I need to have this every night. I have once every weeknight. I don't think like that. I just think right after dinner, I turn off, turn off my electronics, plug that away, walk into the garage and set up to do a recording. That's the system. Anything that starts to get in the way of the system is by nature getting in the way of the goal. So it's a very, it's a very different way of thinking about things. If you really haven't done it and people will start complaining, yeah, you're talking about a system, but I don't see how I'm getting to my goal. It's like, look, get up, do what you got to do, work the plan, see what happens, and then adjust again for the next day. It's powerful stuff. So let's see. Doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. Samurai says, I knew I wasn't going crazy. Synchronicity is real. This still applies today. Thanks for sharing and confirming this. Yeah, man. Synchronicity is an interesting thing. It's, I won't, I won't try to put a single definition on it right now. Cause I know people use it in different ways, but synchronicity, 
I definitely feel that there's certain, there's so much going on right now. There's so many different vibes, thoughts, information dumps, inputs, outputs. It's amazing how much is going through our heads and across our senses, across our sensory plane, that we can't really tell what's going on in the sub successive layers of our conscious. Like we're only, we're only seeing, hey, this is on Instagram. I got a like, there's a follow, there's a friend there. And we, and we really have started to lose touch with a lot of the things that are going on because we're so information, we've been inundated with so much information. So naturally these things start to get pushed back into our subconscious and suddenly everybody's thinking about something, but because it's in everybody's subconscious, we don't know that we're all thinking about it. Boom, stuff comes out, stuff happens. And yes, is there any, is there really any such thing as a coincidence? Do things really just happen to coincide with each other? I suppose there is room for that, but because of the laws of probability, there's a lot more 